Good morning. All right, today uh, I will be sipping my gas station coffee that I picked up uh, and some of these sweet cayenne barbecue cashews while I go through some of the open pull requests in YT, look at some issues, and see if I can make some progress on uh, organizing some of the um, issues that I've kind of had rumbling around in my head uh, into projects and so on. Um, the other thing I should note uh, is that I'm not sure how long this is going to last um, because I've got a bit of a, a weird schedule today, so hopefully it'll be going on for a while, but uh, I guess we'll see. Um, all right, let's get down to it. Let me switch over the view. All right, so let's take a look. So this is the top level view of the current YT pull requests uh, uh, view. Um, here we have all of our open pull requests. I'm also gonna open up the issues. Today, I'm going to uh, eat some vegetables as it were, although I genuinely like eating vegetables. Go through a bunch of these, see if we can uh, triage them, uh, set them up for next actions. Now, typically, um, we go through this newest to oldest. I'm going to start by doing that, but then I'm going to switch it. So my plan for today is to see what things I can take action on right now, uh, then identify the things that uh, need action to be take uh, that need a little bit of work in order for action to be taken and then move on from there all right so let's start at the top uh, fix a bug in masking individual value or invalid values in line integral convolution so this looks suspiciously uh, like a, a, a disk where so this is definitely random data uh, at least from what I can tell because we've got the density here um, Looks like we've got our line integral convolu convolution here. Uh, summary doesn't really give us too very much. Um, let's see, reproducibility of the LIC plots. Okay, so let's take a look at the reviews. If self dot texture is none. Ah, okay. So we set a pseudo random number random state. I'm fine with fixing that to a specific value uh, is finite so let's see we want both X and Y to be finite everywhere that it's not we set our ma uh, we set our data and our clip which is uh, clipped to our limits uh, to nan so this is this looks good to me there is a way to do this in numpy so I'm going to leave a comment, but at the same time, uh, it is possible to. Uh, we don't. We don't actually have to do this. Uh, so optional for future develop, uh, future changes np.putmask lic data mask np.nan um, here lic data clip But otherwise, uh, this looks good. I will approve. Let's check on the conversation here. All checks have passed. It's had a uh, an approval, and it's a bug fix. So I can go ahead and merge it. All right, let's check on our fix of a regression. And 
This looks like a stylistic change. Uh, to be honest, I don't like either of these, but uh, my preference is to, to explicitly set it out as uh, uh, if normal is none and fields is none. Um, Actually, my second one doesn't work. All right, I'll start the review because I haven't looked at the rest yet. I'm getting a note in the chat that it's not stylistic, uh, this right here, uh, but I guess that's something I'll need to think about to see the specific difference why. Uh, normal equals self down. Okay, that's good. Is this in a different function? Yeah, it is. But let's expand. Yeah, it's in a different function. Okay, iter tools product. Uh, the iter tools function I always forget how to use. Adds this. So this is testing slice plot with this, this, and this. Okay. So those are all the same vector, but they're specified in different ways, as a tuple, as a list, and as an array. It also tests it with projection plot. This looks good to me. Uh, and this is green. I will merge it. Oh, and I just received a moderation, a post moderation check for the YT users mailing list. It seems that our Norton total protection membership has been renewed. Oh, I should definitely apply uh, supply that. Okay. Let's go back to the pull requests. I'm going to go ahead and reload this. I have to track the blockless particles. I have to add a test case for that. Um, add explicit support for Python 3.10 on Windows. I'm going to hold off on looking at that. Um, all right, enable YT plus interactive matplotlib interface plot.show. This is in draft state, but I had not noticed this one, so I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this and see what it looks like. I'm going to take a look at this, although I don't anticipate giving uh, a lot of comments just now. Try plot window show. Gets, we get rid of that. One nice thing would be if um, we got rid of the default show from that, which has a tendency to double output inside the notebook. Alright. 
So we're specifically moving over to pyplot.savefig. So I am going to leave a comment on this because um, one of the things that this is doing is it's moving us away from the object-oriented interface into using PyPlot, which I have some reservations about, but it's not fair to suggest stopping development. So instead, what I'm going to do is suggest that um, in this particular case, this is a change that warrants a broader uh, discussion some caveats in there. The object oriented interface may be completely replicable from PyPlot and that the advantages are no longer present. But I want to make sure that we have accounted for that before making this change from using the low-level fine-grained selection of canvases and figure objects. Okay. Adding the, the HALA front end. This one is marked as a work in progress. I'm actually going to edit the name. To be enhancement. Uh, right, it's built on this. So I'm going to read the files, then I'm going to take a quick look at the comments. make a comment here. Um, since this is just grabbing a quick set of values and then closing the file, it might be simpler to manage the file handle with a context manager. So this would be with h5pi file as h5f. Uh, then here, indent it. So we'll say that. Um, this does remind me of 
you know how difficult it is to generate these front ends, uh, which you know is kind of a long-standing issue uh, that hopefully we'll have a solution for someday. Um, as Cameron notes in the pull request, this is a pretty straightforward code, and it kind of stinks that it uh, requires so much effort to do this. So, self.numgrids equals one. Um, I want to see the conversation. Okay, yeah. Grid dot left edge. Max level equals one. I think this should be zero. I think the levels should be zero. Okay, populate grid objects. That looks good. something we have in other front ends for key unit. Self class default unit items. Is that default? I'm sure we do. I that doesn't look like something that, that Cameron would have just added um, here. I think using the context manager would be appropriate here as well. Parameters, yeah, that looks good. As type equals F8. Um, right. Current time doesn't get set to an uh, to a. Uh, current time does not get set to a unit full quantity at this point. Periodicity, it's all non-periodic. Now later on, they might change that, so I'll take a look at that to see. one so this probably means that the level can be one without any issues but I think it's still safer to have level While I'm doing this, um, I'm not sure bug is the right one here, but uh, we'll go ahead and do this. change the cosmological simulation attribute to be a boolean, but at best we should ensure it is optional, and that, and perhaps change it to something like co-moving supplement it something like co-moving or time varying to indicate
indicate that we expect the length to change, units to change. Yep, is valid. I think that's probably enough to be um, uh, this. So the is valid method is where we check to see whether or not something meets the definition of a given simulation type, and it's where a lot of the so-called magic happens in auto determining stuff. Um, the uh, downside to it is that it can be difficult to be sufficiently fine-grained. So I think this will be okay because here this is a top-level set of attributes in an HDF5 file um, and I don't know of any that have both bounds and domain in the top level so it's probably fine. Okay. I sure do love F strings. Although I think I need to learn a little bit more about how closures and F strings work. Um, like, I assume this works, that comp will be evaluated when velocity field is computed and def velocity is executed. I think I need to learn a little bit more. Oh, row units, row units. Code pressure. Okay, this looks good. Fields, unit system, yep. Kinetic energy density, half uh, times mv squared. So, so in general, this is a fine way to do it if you can guarantee that the sub chunks or that the chunks of data are not too large. But for situations like this where we are currently analyzing unigrids everywhere that may be quite large, this will generate a number of temporary arrays. So let's see if we can figure out how many arrays it would be. I think this would generate, uh, this would be one, uh, two, then three, four, and then five. Generate something like five or more temporary arrays of the size of the data object. A way to reduce the number of temporary arrays would be to do in-place operations like vx equals data gas like uh, we'll say V mag equals that
Alternately, you could use data, gas, velocity, magnitude instead, which I believe is already written to optimize for in-place operations. Okay, if gas energy is in the self-field list. Huh. Oh boy, remember back in the day, uh, all the Enzo fields had so many different um, ways of writing gas energy. They had thermal energy and total energy and all of that. Underscores everywhere, spaces sometimes, I think. Well, anyway. It's pressure. All right, so I think the important thing here is to look at the um, the IO. Read fluid selection data NP empty size DW equals float sixty four. I think this is right. Yep. We're doing a cast. Yeah, I think that's right. Ha. Right track. I've left a handful of comments that might help. It might just be ignorable. Let's take a look. Okay. Alrighty. Chris is handling this one, I think. Let me take a look at the Chimera front end. There's been some activity on that today. waiting on that. Okay. Decouple YT config from initialization. Oh yeah, I did look at this. Most of this is just moving it around. This should be a nearly no op. Um, one of the annoying things about this, to be honest, is going to be that we'll have to put all these inside the existing functions. So what I'm going to do is ask come on, um, do you think it is worthwhile to explore a wrapper function for our wrapper function that manages the imports appropriately?
All right. Look. To take care of something for just a moment over here. back to this. I'm going to ignore that, because uh, we already did that one. Only a lot of merges that are yes or no backport labeled. That was me. It was marked as a draft. We had a lot of comments. I'm going to I think this has validity. But I'm going to close it as we need to get comfortable with the current processes. Associated one did not get merged yet. So I'm going to enable auto merge so that when Britain approves, it'll go in. Okay. Take a look at the particle reader cleanup, which actually updated today. Merging is blocked because of the reviews. Okay. Uh, let's see, I just got an email about that. Okay, fix issue 3541. Task particle read snapshot series object. I'm going to close the snapshot series object. Um, open compressed files. Now I can't remember where we're at with this, so let's take a quick look at it. I thought this was such a cool idea.
to data set store. Oh, I really like this. This branch has conflicts. Um, See if I can resolve these. Well, looks to me like the only thing that happened here was load archive.py got added. So Here, open compressed files, r atter mount seems to be the change. Um, let's see, x array, scipy, requests, pix, qt5, yeah. I think that's the change. This was closed. Uh, looks like it got mentioned here. Uh, it got closed yesterday. Um, There's something in the Twitch chat about this. Nope. Clement, I think you're watching. Can I remove this or no? Can remove it. Okay. Okay. So let's go through this and see exactly what happens here. We've got prod. Looks like the main difference here is OSX fuse. I can get rid of these. No longer have to pin. Okay. And now let's take a look at loaders.py. One conflict. Oh, fine. Let me check one thing. It looks to me like some of these. have backslashes on the dot for pi. Doesn't look like that is mandatory though, because it will just match the char any character. So I think that should be harmless. So I'm gonna mark that as resolved. Mark this as resolved. this as resolved, and mark this as resolved. So now, I've already reviewed this, and it, I think it's good to go. So, I 
I'm going to enable auto merge. Okay. All right, let's move on. set units from config file that one's still running and I think I'm supposed to add some documentation for it um, so why don't I go ahead and do that right now while everyone is watching all right uh, YT, YT, GHPR, checkout three three four six So I want to make a couple comments about this particular um, change because this is it. I think it could be part of a much bigger one, which we can think about at another time. But um, here, actually, let me go ahead and put this on a milestone for four one. Um, the idea that that moving all of this, which is currently typically stored inside a set of um, tuples inside each individual uh, you know object or inside each front end, is to a configuration is great. I think that's wonderful, um, and I think that it could open a lot of stuff up. So let's see. Local configuration, configuration options at runtime. Available per field configuration options. Do we have a display name already? Available per field plot options. I'll change that. Um, and then here, available per field configuration options. I know that I'm changing some names here, but I think that it's probably worthwhile because, in a sense, this is the I mean, this should all kind of be the same thing, but it's not. Um, it's now possible. It is possible to set attributes for fields that would typically be set by the front end source code, such as the aliases for a field units that field should be expected in, and the display name. Uh, this allows individuals to customize their YT, they customize what YT expects of a given uh, data set without modifying the YT source code. For instance, if your simulation, if your data set has an on disk field called particle extra field one, you could specify its units, display name, and what YT should think of it as with okay 
now, uh, let's go on over here. Field plugins, magnetic field species, field parameters, gradients. Wow, we have a lot of field documentation. If you are developing a front end or need to customize what thinks of as the fields for a given data set. See both. Uh, now let's add our references here. Per field config. Oh. We already have a bunch of that, so let's grep dash r per field config doc. Change this to per field plot config. Update my references. And now over here. See both and ref per field config. For information on how to change the display units on disk units, display name, etc. Alright, so let's go ahead and update this. Let's get commit. Add, oh, right. For some reason, it has to reinitialize my environment every single time. Did we just merge something big in here? Like while I was, all right, okay. Allow unit customizations from config. Um, are we not importing YTCFG anymore? What's the story? Which thing got merged without me knowing? this needs to go up above this because of sorting. So let's mark it as resolved, commit a merge, let's see what it yells at me about. Let's see if I can mark this as ready. Actually, I'm not sure that I can. Mark it ready for review. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to reload this so I can get the updated values of the test cases. 
improved interpolation schemes for smooth covering grid. I do think we need to address that. Um, this one I need to revisit. So what I'm going to do is I have a list of, I have a to-do list of my own. I'm going to quick come on over to that. Um, I'm going to add these. Uh, let's see, refactor walk volume. I need to figure out how that meshes with, Clement, uh, with Corinthian's work issues with stream front ends with non-Cartesian particles. I suspect that one's not going to be so bad. Move interpolation routines to PXD to that one. That one might be hard. Um, that seems like about it. All right. So... Let me go over to Issues and to Projects. Oh, we got a new set of projects. Front end refactor. Okay. I'm going to create a new project in Projects Beta. Actually, let me learn more about this. Okay, add project. Okay, YT project organization to create a new project. this one um, stretched grids That's sure fancy huh Um, DDS, uh, assignees, Matthew Turk, uh, Start process of adding variable DDSs. Um, now I thought that I had some issues here, but let's take a look. Ha! There we go. Semi-structured grid. Uh, 3694.
forgotten about this. Distracted by asking about that, by thinking about that memory bloat. Okay, so I think um, support stretched grids. All right. So let's add some items here uh, to add a draft issue. Enable semi-structure grid to be specified with DXDYDZ arrays. Uh, doc, add documentation of how to identify, how to specify non-uniform grids. Uh, let's say stretched grids. Uh, doc, uh, no, uh, we'll call this one enhancement. Allow non-uniform grids with a functional mapping from iRes and iCord to fwidth and fchords. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to uh, convert this one to an issue inside YT. I'm going to edit that issue. we have in place the structures for loading non-uniform grids, both with and without functional forms of iRes plus i chords to f width and plus f chords. We need to document it. Entry sources. This one, um, convert to issue, we'll do it in YT. Now let me edit that issue. Uh, edit here. There are two modes for how we can specify non-uniform grids. The first, which is more broadly supported, is to have no functional form for specifying the coordinates and instead taking them as an input. The second is to supply a functional form. There are several locations in the code that functional form will need to be uh, inserted. The principal one will be in the conversion from I chords to F chords, but we will also need to utilize this inside the projection code, where right now we manually modify the F chords based on I res directly. Take a look at um, this. All right, now I'm actually kind of liking this whole projects view thing, but let's Let me 
go ahead and note this one inside here. Um, ah. Let's delete that. Control space. Yt. Athena plus plus. Thirty-three forty-six. Let me address this. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and. Actually, I want to see this. my last window. Let me go ahead. I am now going to um, it's project one. Oh, I guess it doesn't exist. Okay. I'm going to quick shoot an email out to IT Dev. Projects. Hi folks, I've started using org level projects to collect and organize work. First one I did, I started up was for stretched grids. Please feel free to add items with this functionality and so on. One neat thing about it is that we can link issues across repositories here. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and assign myself to this one, to this one. Um, start pro uh, that one's in progress. That one is to, to, to do, how to specify stretched grids, to do, to do, okay. All right, so my stream has been going on for about an hour and 10 minutes. Go ahead and uh, create a new project. Well, it's not going to make this one just yet. We do have a lot more project management that needs to be addressed here, though. So, I mean, yeah. Uh, let's go here. I'll take a quick look at some of our issues. I wish that I had these view in a Kanban view, but um, actually. 
actually. Further, uh, let's say generalize beyond cosmology. Well, no. Uh, kind of want to have. Um, okay. You know what? I think I am spinning at this point, so I'm going to give it a little bit of time. But I'm probably going to come back to this later today. So um, for now, I am going to say goodbye and come back to this at a later time. Thanks for watching, everybody.